Hi everyone, welcome back to Nuskrit and in today's video we are going to look at, at a very important question in Java and uh, it's related to concurrency in Java, right? So the question is that we want to print uh, the sum of numbers from 1 to let's say any number n, right? Using two threads, using two threads, using two threads. So this is a task that we need to perform. So if let's say we want to calculate the sum of uh, first n natural numbers, uh, right? So we can simply do this task using a simple for loop. But let's say if we want to, if if the interviewer uh, wants me to perform this operation using two different threads in Java, then how we would perform this uh, particular task in Java? That's that is something that we are going to look in this particular video, right? So let's uh, start this video. So in the initial phase, I would want, I would create a class, a simple adder class, which will simply create, uh, which will actually calculate the sum of first and natural numbers using single thread only. Right. And then in the same video, we will discuss like the solution if we want to use two threads, right? So without wasting any time, let's simply create a class. So this is a folder concurrency in Java, right? I would first create a simple class adder dot java right so let's let me create a class adder so this is a simple adder class and uh, i would create a main uh, method now what what i would do here is i want to let's say uh, so i i just want ki whenever whenever any user is going to uh, find the sum of first n natural numbers i want uh, the user to give me the range right so what i would do here is i would be taking two variables let's say int start and int end and there will be one variable which will keep the track of count right so these are the three variables that i would be expecting from the user right so whenever any any user is going to create the object of this adder class i would be expecting that he would be giving me start and end range right now i'm going to define the constructor of this class and i will be setting uh, this dot start is equals to start and this dot end is equals to end and maybe the counter by zero let's say so this dot counter by zero great so that's it uh, that's it we have done so the, the, I'm, I'm actually using uh, one of uh, the extension vs code extension that is tab 9 which is a ai assistant tool right so that that's why it is giving me hints but but the hints that it is giving we are not going to do that right so we have as of now we have simply created three variables a start and an counter and a simple constructor which is a adder right now I want to create a method in this particular class. Let's say public void add, right? And uh, what I want in this uh, function is I want to run a loop. Let's say from int i is equal to start and up till this range and i plus plus. And now what I would do is I will simply this dot counter plus equal to i, right? So let me put this over here also so that you just identify that okay, this is the class variable, right? So uh, this is a add function, right? And it is running from start till end. And this is the counter, which we initialized from zero. Now this is incrementing and we, every time this is the loop is running, we are simply adding this particular I to this counter, right? So that's it that we wanted to do in this add adder class. Now in the main function, we would create an object, right? So let's say adder, adder is equals to new adder, right? And now let's say I want to calculate the sum of first, let's say 10,000 numbers, right? Let's say 10,000 10, numbers. Now what's happening over here is when we are writing this particular line, so it is calling this uh, uh, constructor of this class and what it is setting is for this adder object, it is setting in the memory adder dot start as start value, which is one, then adder dot end is equals to this 10,000 value and adder dot counter as of now is zero, right? Now what I would do is I would simply call this adder dot add function, right? So what it, it will do is when, when I will be calling this adder dot add function, what it is going to do is it will call this particular function and it will run a loop from start till end and it will uh, be adding every I to this counter, right? That means if I print the adder dot counter at this line, so I should get the result, right? So I should get the result. Now let me try just, let me just try this. So I have opened my terminal and now let me try just adder.java. 
and java dot java adder right okay great so we are getting the sum of first uh, first 10000 numbers but this particular code is actually using a single thread only we are not using any two threads right it's a very simple code snippet wherein we have a simple class adder class we are giving it two ranges start and end and a counter variable is being initialized by zero and we have written a function which is add function which actually runs a loop from start till end let's say uh, let's say this add function what this add function does is it's, it's it takes an initial value and it takes the uh, final value and it actually calculates the sum right that's it great and we are simply creating a object and then we are calling this add function through uh, using this object and finally we are printing the counter value for this particular object and hence we can see that it is calculating the uh, the sum of first uh, 10000 numbers now we want to achieve the same same thing uh, using two threads so let's see that how we can do this so let me create another class let's say concurrent adder right concurrent adder dot java great so now i have created a class which is a concurrent adder class and in the same manner i would be having a main function over here right it's a main function and uh, this time what i am going to do here is i i am not going to calculate the sum in just one go right i would be creating two different objects i would be creating two different objects let's say for example what i am trying to say over here is i am going to create two different objects let's say adder 1 and adder 2 right adder 2 now adder 1 will also have its start value its end value and its counter right so in a similar fashion adder 2 is also going to have its start value end value and counter value so when we will create first adder so by default we will give a start value as 1 and let's say end value as let's say 5000 right and counter definitely will be 0 by default and in the same way for this adder 2 object we are going to give it a adder start value as 5001 right and end value as 10000 because when we will be creating two different objects right so first object will take the responsibility to calculate the sum of first 5000 numbers and other object will take the responsibility of calculating the sum of uh, next 5000 numbers right but what we will do is we will be uh, we will be uh, running these two objects uh, like we will be running these two objects in two separate threads right so what what it will internally do is they will keep on calculating the sum concurrently right so let's let's try to implement this particular thing so what i'm going to do here is i would be creating concurrent adder let's say adder 1 is equals to new concurrent adder and i'm going to give it a uh, range from 1 till 5000 right right and i am going to create another adder let's say adder 2 and uh, i will give the range of 5000 1 till 10000 now it is giving me error because we haven't defined the constructor yet so let's try to do that so in the same manner this time also i'm going to have one start value right one end value and sorry one end value and another one is counter right now let's define the constructor for this so co concurrent adder int start is equals to so this is do, this dot is start is equals to start this dot end is equals to end and this dot counter is equals to zero right so my job is done right now what i want to do is i want to implement uh, uh, the same function let's say public uh, void add right and this add function what this add function will do is it will basically run a loop from start value till end value so let's say this will start from this dot start and it will run till end value right this will run till end value and what i will do is i am going to uh, add counter plus equal to i plus equal to i because we are creating the sum we are not actually incrementing the counter we are actually cal calculating the sum of first numbers uh, the sum of all numbers in this range so i think the, the code from uh, line number 3 up till uh, line number 17 is exactly same that we did in the previous uh, adder dot java class so our code ba basically will differ in this main method right now we have two different objects adder 1 and adder 2 adder 1 takes the responsibility to calculate the sum from 1 till 5000 adder 2 take the responsibility to calculate the sum from 5000 1 till 10000 but i want to run these two 
the I, I basically want to calculate the sum of these two adder objects in a concurrent method right in a concurrent manner sorry right so let's uh, create two threads so I would be creating thread t1 is equals to new thread right and in this thread I would be uh, passing it as an anonymous function which will run and in this basically what I want to do is adder one dot add function I will call right so what we are doing here is we are simply uh, kind of creating anonymous function kind of thing and we are simply calling this function which is adder dot add right so when we will call this adder dot add function right in this thread so what it will do is for this adder it will basically uh, call this function right and for this adder object we have a start value as 1, we have end value as 5000 and we have counter value as 0. So it will basically run a loop and calculate the sum, start calculating the sum. In the same manner we are going to create a, another thread and well, let's say let's name it as t2 and in this two, t2 thread we will be having the computation of adder2 object right. So we will call this adder2 dot add function. Now what we are uh, going to do next here is so you if you are not aware uh, the concept uh, with the concept of uh, concurrency or multi-threading in Java so uh, let me tell you whenever we create a new thread we need to start them right so we will be calling this function t1 dot start and t2 dot t2 dot start also now let's try to run this right okay so finally we should be getting the answer so I would be doing one thing adder one dot counter plus adder two dot counter right and the sum of these two values should be again the same which we got previously that is 5000 5000 right so let's try to run this and see whether if we are getting the correct answer or not right so let me run this java c not adder but concurrent adder dot java okay and let me run this also oops we are not getting the correct answer i think right because you can see in the previous case uh, which we written uh, while while implementing the adder class which were which was the code which was running sequentially not in two threads in that case we were getting the answer as 5000 5000 but here also uh, here in this case we have almost the correct logic but we are not getting the expected output and the reason for this is I would like to uh, highlight because this is a very important concept. So let's try to understand this logic. As of now what we are doing is we have three things right. One is main thread right. One is main thread. Another thread that you have created is T1 and another thread that you have created is T2 right. What happens is when you create any thread out of a main thread. So let me write this way. So we have created two threads T1 and T2. So these are the two threads that we have created out of the main thread, right? These are the two threads that we have created out of the main thread. Now what's happening here is the main thread, the main thread will also take some time to run and finish. Also these two threads will also take some time to run and finish, right? So let's say this, this T1 thread is taking, let's say 10 seconds to run. I'm not, it is not definitely taking 10 seconds. That's just try to understand the concept only. Let's say T2 thread is taking, let's say eight seconds to run, right? Eight seconds to run, or let's say T2 maybe is taking, let's say 12 seconds to run, right? Similarly, main thread will also take some time. So because we don't have any computational logic in the main thread, we almost have our computational logic in thread T1 and thread two only, right? So what's happening behind the scene is the main thread is taking very much less time, right? Very much less, less time. Let's say maybe two seconds, right? And because of this fact, the main threading, main thread is getting completed and they are not actually, they are still running. They are still running, right? So before T1 and T2 finishes off, our main thread completes, our main thread logic gets completed and hence the total sum that we are uh, so as soon as your main thread is completed we are simply before actually main thread is completed we are printing adder dot adder adder one dot counter plus adder two dot counter right so at that moment whatever sum that we have in adder one dot counter and adder two dot counter that is getting printed right so you can assume it to be three ways right so whenever you implement concurrency so concurrency is nothing 
but running some part of your code independently, right? So let's say if you have a complete program and you are running this part as a independently, you are running this part as independently and rest of the code is, uh, let's say running in the main thread, right? So uh, if your main thread getting completed, then uh, main thread will not wait for these threads to be completed. That's the point, right? So we need to align them. We need to align these two threads with the main thread also. So I will tell you this concept that, that how we align thread T1 and thread two thread T2 with this main thread also so that main thread gets completed only when thread T1 and thread T2 also gets completed. I will show you that thing, right? Just wait for some time. But let me just show you one more thing. Now, if I run this program once again, right? Let me run this program once again. So you will see that this time we are getting some other answer, right? Because uh, these two threads are running concurrently and they are just, they are still running. They are still running. And at this moment, we are calculating the sum of adder one and adder two load counter. So it is not necessary that every time, whenever we will hit this line number 34, at that moment, adder counter, adder one dot counter and adder two dot counter will always be same. No. So it, it might be possible that when, when we are hitting this line number 34, adder one counter, which was, which was calculated previously, this time may, may, we may find this value completely different. And that's why we are getting the, uh, some other answer this time. Even if you will run this thread once again, uh, if you will run this code once again, you may get other, you may get some other answer, right? So how we can actually align these two threads with the main thread such that main thread does not finish off early. So we can do simply like this T1 dot join. That means we are asking thread T1 to join the main thread, right? Also, we will need to do this also that we are saying that T2 thread also will join the main thread also. So now if main thread even like if main thread uh, finishes off early, then it will not actually uh, gets completed. It will wait until T1 and T2 both are completed. Right. And then only this will, uh, this will actually uh, be printed finally. Right. So now, uh, but, but this is giving me error because it actually throws an interrupted, uh, sorry, interrupted exception. So I need to throw it. So what I'll do is I will simply write throws, throws interrupted exception. Right. Now, uh, yes, the error is gone. And now if I run this particular code, so you would see that we are getting the correct answer. Yeah. So now we have got the correct answer because now we are waiting for the thread T1 and thread T2 to get completed and then only we will complete the main thread. So that was it. I think you have enjoyed this uh, video. So I will attach the link uh, to this, uh, the, to this code block in, in the description box. You can actually uh, go through it. And this is a very important question for interviews also, right? So whenever, let's say if, if, if by any chance, if maybe in future you, you are asked this kind of question, so I would highly recommend you to write your code solution in this way only, uh, using these classes and all, right? So it will actually highlight that you are familiar with object oriented concepts also. So that will, that will actually create more impact. So yeah, that's it from my side. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.